Good afternoon. Uh, this is Dr. Taylor. Uh, we are going to go over our week three update uh, just to make sure we know where everyone is. So I will share my screen just so we know what's going on. So if you see this video today on the 7th, uh, be sure to do forum post two because it is due uh, tonight, uh, 2 7 21 at 1159 PM. Uh, but now I'm going to go over a few things as it pertains to uh, week, week three for our class. So if we go to the content section of the D2L, let me move my, my, my face here. There we go. Um, week three, uh, we will be talking about logical fallacies. So it would be useful to, to gain an understanding of logical fallacies to read the brief article from the Purdue OWL, which is the online writing lab, uh, and then watch the nine minute video, understanding various types of logical fallacies. And then there is the second forum post of the semester, which will re require you to examine uh, logical fallacies in greater detail. So let us take a look at that. I'm working from home today, so it might be a little choppy. All right, so there's form post one, which is due today, uh, 2721. Uh, but I have posted form post two on logical fallacies. So after you have rev reviewed the Purdue OWL and the video on logical fallacies, please take a moment to view the website thou shalt not commit logical fallacies so you find that right here once you click on the link and it has a list of logical fallacies um, a middle ground texas sharpshooter uh, anecdotal black or white there is a number some are easier than others but there is the website and then after you've examined that website and read yeah, try to read all of them if you can. Uh, pick one logical fallacy and briefly briefly summarize it. Uh, then after you have summarized the logical fallacy of your cho choice, do a little research on YouTube and find an example of your logical fallacy being employed. So uh, go on YouTube and type in the logical fallacy name uh, and then examples or do a Google search and find videos of a logical fallacy uh, being used. Uh, I find it useful uh, to find that politicians are very good at using logical fallacies. Some politicians, perhaps in our recent memory, uh, were exemplary at employing logical fallacies. Um, but you will find throughout the epochs of time that politicians are very, very good at using logical fallacies. Um, so, but you don't have to use a, a politician. I just find that it would be easier. And then lastly, after you have looked through the website on logical fallacies and you picked one and you've summarized it, uh, lastly, ref reflect on why logical fallacies are problematic in public speaking and how you will avoid, attempt to avoid them in your own speeches. Because uh, as we get to uh, more uh, persuasive speeches this semester, uh, and you have to craft an argument, uh, logical fallacies are prevalent from time to time. Students will use them. So that post should be between 200 to 250 words. Uh, if you're a little under, that's fine. If you're a little over, that's fine. Uh, and you must read at least five and respond to at least one. But rather than agree with the post, because uh, I find that when I read through the discussion forum, students are like, ah, I agree. That was a wonderful post you had about this, this topic you were writing about. So rather than simply agree with their insights, um, I want you to read a post and then express what you learned from reading their post. So what did you take away from it? What insights did they provide? And I think it would be useful if you didn't respond to the same logical fallacy you did. It would be useful 
to respond to a logical fallacy that you didn't engage, or perhaps it was a logical fallacy you didn't quite understand. Uh, perhaps after reviewing uh, one of your peers' uh, summaries and examples of a logical fallacy, it may have given you a new insight. So that is what you need to do for week two. Simply have to do the brief reading, watch the nine minute video, and then do the discussion post. Uh, and you will have until the 14th at 11.59 p.m. to do that. But there is one last thing I would like us to do uh, or consider. And I have posted the bonus form. Uh, and the bonus form is entirely optional. And the first post is uh, as it pertains to fur babies. So, or it could be scaled or, or maybe you have a hairless cat or something, I don't know. Uh, but the first one pertains to your pets. Uh, and this is worth a total of uh, five bonus points. So essentially with bonus posts, as long as you do it, you get the points. And that could help you uh, down the road. It could bump you from a plus to a minus. Maybe you got a B minus and you get the five bonus points and that bumps you up to a B. Or maybe you have a B and the five bonus points bump you up to a B plus. So bonus points are useful for that. Uh, and I will give varying opportunities throughout the course of the semester for you to gain some bonus points. Uh, so the first bonus points, excuse me, the first bonus post, which, which is optional, uh, is I want you to introduce and share your pet with the class. In your video, you should do the following. Introduce your pet by name, uh, what breed or species is your pet, and then why do you love him or her? What makes him or her special? Uh, do they do something, do they play fetch so good, or are they just good at snuggling up or cuddling, uh, or do they just take up space? Uh, my parents have a dog who I don't like, just takes up space and barks all the time. I don't like them, uh, but they got other dogs that I do like. So if you don't like your animal, tell us why. Uh, but I would assume that everyone loves their animal. So for this video, there is no length requirement. Uh, but do be sure to watch your peers, because I want to do this as a, a way to establish a sense of community in our class. Uh, it's an online class, so there's not a lot of interaction face to face in real time. Uh, but maybe perhaps through these little assignments, uh, we can find ways to cultivate a sense of community anyway. So you can click on it and you'll find that I, I did one of the posts. I, I did it just as an example. Uh, you can see mine. Uh, I posted a video, which you can watch on your own, and then I posted a picture of my dog. And it's a funny picture, but he, that's, that's how he is. He just loves to eat. So that covers everything for week three for public speaking. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, do not hesitate to contact me. Otherwise, have a great week, week three.